then you want to try to slide them down into the clutch sleeve so that those plates are now lined up with those marks. Now comes the interesting part. This is a really new part that I have never done before until today. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take that hook on the spring right there, and we're going to slide that into one of the synchronizer plates. And then we are going to slide the spring around and hook it onto the other two plates. Now the first time I did this, I missed one of the plates because it was sitting down too far. All right. So verify once you put it in. that each of these plates are sitting over the top of the spring. Once you've done that, flip the assembly over marking which one the tip went into because that's the same one you're going to want to put the tip into on the opposite side. So we put the tip in, bring the spring around, there. That is much easier than trying to hold those springs in while you force that assembly down into the clutch sleeve. All right, so that's my new preferred method for assembling the synchronizer assembly. The next part we plan to assemble is going to be the main shaft assembly. It's going to consist of the main shaft, the first reverse gear, the second gear, the synchronizer blocking rings, and the synchronizer assembly. And, last but not least, the snap ring. This is one of those items that gets forgotten. And when it does get forgotten, it causes lots of problems and causes people to have to go back and take the transmission apart. So we're not going to forget that. Matter of fact, I want to remind you about that before we get it done. All right. So the first thing you want to do is take your main shaft and slide your second gear onto it. Okay. If you feel that you need, it's a good idea to go ahead and get your assembly lube on there. Okay. And slide that second gear onto the main shaft. The next part that goes onto the assembly is going to be synchronizer blocking ring. This you definitely want to lube up. Slide it onto the second gear. That second gear blocking ring. If you forget to lube that, it can cause it to jam and do all kinds of things. So you need to make sure that you lube that. Next to go on is going to be your synchronizer assembly. Okay, now what you're going to do, you're going to slide that down a little bit like that, and it's going to jam up. So what you got to do to get it the rest of the way on is to rotate the blocking ring until it matches up with the synchronizer plates. When it does, they'll slide on down, and you can slide everything on together, except now, there we go. We're completely locked into second gear, all the way down. Everything looks good, except we're still missing what? We're missing the snap ring, all right? Now, to put the snap ring on, you're going to need a special pair of snap ring pliers. They look like these. These are pretty well worn out, but I've been using them for a long time and uh, they still work for me, so I'm going to keep using them. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put this snap ring on there. And I'm going to probably stand it up to do so because it's kind of difficult to do it without it, but we'll try. If you've seen the rest of the videos, you'll see that snap rings are my nemesis. Let's see if we can adjust this a little bit. There we go. Now we can see. 
Okay. We're just a snap ring still on there. Okay. Snap ring pliers. I do a lot better at getting them on than I do getting them off. All right. That one's installed. Okay. So now all of that assembly is on. Don't pull the slit the sleeve out too far because you can pull it all the way out and the springs will snap off because there's nothing holding it on there. What holds it in place is going to be the rest of the transmission. Okay. You'll have your blocking ring on. Oops, sorry. You'll have your blocking ring on like so, which will lube and stick it in there and uh, it will be ready to go. But the rest of the transmission holds this assembly together and keeps it from falling off. All right. At this point, I'm going to recommend that you do a dry fit of your cluster gear into the case. The reason I say a dry fit is because these washers, if you pack them up with grease, can create as much as 10 thousandths clearance or take up as much as 10 thousandths clearance. So if you really want to find out what your real clearance is, you need to do a dry fit of your cluster gear in your case without all the grease. All right. So we're going to do that. Now your washers are still going to need to be installed. Which is going to make this difficult because usually people use grease to hold everything together in there. All right? And you're not going to have grease to do that for you. Okay, now I'm doing a dry fit on this case. I've got brand new washers from Crown and they are installed in the case. However, there is virtually no free play from end to end. All right, we're going to hook up the uh, dial indicator on it and verify that, but uh, it looks like I have actually practically none. So let's see what we got. As you can see, I have only four thousandths clearance. If I had put the grease on there, you wouldn't have any clearance at all. So that's why you need to do the dry fit first, besides which it saves you from having to clean off all the bearings and washers. What I'm going to have to do is shave one of these washers down about twelve thousandths of an inch. So uh, that's where we'll be going from there. And, let's, and I may just search through the ones I've got and see if I don't have one that's pretty close to it already. Okay. I've spent the last two and a half hours going through all my old washers from all my old rebuilds and uh, finding that none of them met the requirements for getting me my 12 to 18 thousandths on here. So what I ended up doing was taking an old beat up washer that looked like this 
and putting it on my work sharp and slowly but surely whittling away twelve thousandths of an inch uh, sorry eight thousandths of an inch so that I would come in within the twelve thousandths um, it might be one thousandths out around but it worked it got me where I needed to be and so we now have our clearance on our um, cluster gear so it's ready to go uh, we're going to move on but I want to do want to show you I've gone ahead and inserted it back like we had it before the one thing I do want to show you and that is I want you need to be right directly on this is when you start to drive in your cluster gear first off on this other side over here I put gasket sealer inside the hole before I drive the shaft on out to help seal this hole second before you drive this in, let's see if I can get it set where you can see it. Okay. This should be in this configuration. When you look at it, the edge of this right here should come perfectly flush with the top of the hole beside it. All right. When you've got it in that configuration, you know that you'll be able to slide the bar in and be able to knock it all the way down when you get to the end make sure that this slot right here on the side is in the right position if your bar coming across looks like that it's not going to work if it looks like that it's not going to work it needs to be just like that all right that being said we're going to go ahead and drive our counter shaft back out leaving our wooden dowel in place because the um, cluster gear needs to sit down in the bottom of the case for the installation of your main gear and main shaft alright so actually just the main gear All right, there we go. Cluster gear is now in the bottom of the case. Our main shaft is mostly built up. The only part left to talk about now on this main shaft is installing the first reverse slide gear. Your slot here goes to the front towards the synchronizer assembly. The next step is to make sure that we have the first reverse slide gear mounted on the main shaft. Behind that is going to go this bearing spacer. All these bearing spacers are the same thickness. However, we're going to get to a part later on when we're going to check the fit of the second gear. And if when we shift the second gear into position, it leaves a gap like that in between the clutch sleeve and the second gear we're going to want to put an extra shim back here to shim this forward so that that will fit snugly up against there that's a step we'll be doing at the end or near the end all right the next step here is going to be to install the bearing retainer and the rear bearing now the rear bearing isn't, isn't going to want to go on all the way right there you can press it on um, this is one of those instances where I typically don't just because this is kind of a big awkward assembly and it's easier to uh, drive it down